The purpose of this video is to show you the assembly of the 17304 or 17305 electronic LED flashboards. What you see in the video is a section or two sections of the large flashboard. The large flashboard arrives in actually four sections. The small flashboard, the 17302, actually arrives in only three sections. But regardless, they, they actually assemble the same whether it's three sections or four. So what I'm going to show you is how to put these together the right way. The easiest way to start is to lay out your sections on a flat surface. Here we're using the floor, but you could use a large table if you have one. Um, when you get them, or when they arrive, you'll see that the pins on the edges, there's four of them, are covered with a little protective carrier. That gets removed and disposed of. So you're left with these four metal pins. These four metal pins are going to slide into the next section. So obviously you're going to lay this out in the way the bingo board reads and you're going to put them relatively close so that you can connect the, the wire connectors together first. You want to do that first. So you'll see they don't really only go together one way and you want to put them in. Make sure you slide them in nice and tight. They don't lock or anything, but they slide in pretty good. Once they're in, plugged in nice and tight, you can begin to start tucking them back into the flashboards themselves. So as I go together, I'm going to make sure I line the hole, these up to the holes, and the wires slide back. And I want to get these pins in together so I can slide the two together. Once all the sections are put together, what you want to do is flip the board over to its face down with the back side showing. And in the back you'll notice where those pins slid in to the next section. There's little holes there. Those holes are threaded. And when the board arrived, it came with a little hardware kit. A little Allen wrench setup of some sort, maybe not exactly like this. Some pins like this, and there's also some other items in there, some brackets for hanging the flashboard to the brackets here. But for our purposes right now, what we want is these pins, this little Allen wrench tool. We start the pins in the back and they thread in. And when you're all done, as it gets tight, you can start to use the tool. But this actually is so loose, I'm able to tighten it with my fingers. But ultimately, we're going to put this in here, and we're going to tighten those pins down. Once we have all the pins in all the holes throughout the back of the flashboard, the, the flashboards are ready to go to be attached to the blower. Okay, once the flashboard is all set up and installed and you're ready to plug it in, along with the flashboard came a power supply. It looks like this, or very similar to this. They, these can change from time to time, but this is the current version. And the ca cable is attached to the one end of the flashboard. Pretty simple. Plug uh, these two ends together. Plug this into a standard US 110 electrical connection. And you're good to go. One quick point when connecting these connectors is that you want to make sure that they're snug and then they're tightened. The newer ones have the finger pins which can be screwed in by, by hand. The other styles, which either one works, require a screwdriver to tighten up. And again, I want you to get in the habit of tightening those up. You don't need to torque it down, just snug, because you don't want them to accidentally work loose and fall out. Or even sometimes they'll just break to a partial connection. That disturbs the signal and then you have troubles. Okay. We've got the flashboard completely assembled. In our example here, we have it mounted to the wall by having those brackets mounted to the wall, and then we hang the board to the brackets. The board itself is actually not very heavy, so it doesn't call for a real super heavy construction to hold this flashboard up. The other option, if you don't want to mount it to the wall, 
There is available a flashboard stand. It's on wheels, and you can wheel that wherever you want to place it. But for our purposes today, uh, I'm going to show you then what it should look like, how it should function, and how you know everything's working properly. Um, once we have this set up, we want to plug our cables in, and they connect on standard. I believe they're called DB9 serial connectors. They come with the flashboard. It's a cable. It's quite long. I want to say it's like 90 feet long or in that range. There's two ports on the flashboard that you'll see uh, for these boards. And the purpose of that is you can actually daisy chain more than one board down the line. So if you have two, three, four, however many boards you'd like, you can go in one board and then out, out to the next board and then out to the next board and so forth. So that's what we have demonstrated here today. We actually have this set up to an electronic blower where the cable coming in from the blower is coming in here, the out cable is going out here and up to the second flashboard. All right, now that the boards are all installed, we've got them uh, powered up or we're ready to power them up. One of the things I want you to check or, or visually notice is that when you turn them on, they, the lights go through a sequencing process. And all this is doing is it's showing you that every light bulb is working on the board. As it goes through its sequence, it's going to leave off with the last number 18. Not sure if you caught that, but make sure it leaves off with number 18. If you have that or you accomplish that, then the board is powered up and ready to go. Now that it's hooked up to the blower, it's plugged into the blower, plugged into the flashboard, we know the sequencing all works, we're ready to start utilizing the flashboard. When you get to the, when you get to the console of the blower, the first thing you want to press is the enter key. And when you do press the enter key, notice that whatever was previously displayed on the board will get blanked out and all set back to zeros. What this is doing is recycling and resetting up the game. Now, in this example, the, the winning pattern was four corners. Uh, there's no ball count or no number of uh, last number called or anything displayed on the flashboard yet because we haven't started calling bingo. But as we would call bingo, you'll see the last number called displays. The ball count has been one displays last number called also over here and as we go on you'll see how the ball count increases until you're ready to play bingo. Once you're ready for the next game You go through the process on the console and you'll see everything sets back to the next game. In this example, the lower corner is the winning pattern.